Hello everyone, uh, my name is John Saldanha, I am associated to Ever University, Shaya. I am also a collaborator at uh, UCL University and IEPA, Amapá, in Brazil. Um, it's a little bit um, outside Eurasia, a lot outside Eurasia. In fact, I will talk about monumentality including megaliths in the, in the lowland South America, especially in Amazonia. And it links with uh, the, the neolithization process local. Well, let's talk about the neolithization. Uh, following the successful colonization of the globe by our species, New waves of human expansion happened during the Eocene, reshaping cultural, linguistic, and genetic landscapes worldwide. Such expansions may have been triggered by the emergence of neolithization process. The demographic and technological advantages offered by the onset of agriculture as drivers of Eocene cultural expansions are also supported by the appearance and distribution of new ideological forms of display, such as megalith monuments. In this regard, Eurasia always played a central role in the debate relating to the neolithization process and the rise of early forms of monumentality. Lowland South America, however, has been notably absent. In part, this is due to substantially smaller and less re reliable data set when compared to what is available for Eurasia. Here, I want to fill this gap by comparing the links between the increase of food production system, associated increasing population growth rate, and rising forms of monumentality between Eurasia and lowland South America. I will offer a long-term perspective of monumental funerary structures from a specific region of the Amazon, the eastern coast of Guyana. Well, uh, some definitions of Neolithics uh, that the Neolith that um, it can be used um, both for Eurasia but also for South America. This is a more social view of the Neolithic. This um, Julian Thomas um, put it away. Neolithic has often been equated with a particular economic strategy. The indication of subsistence activity are diverse and unstable. However, he thinks that the process of Neolithization generally involved the emergence of new form of sociality, in which various kinds of non-humans became integral to the fabric of human communities, which at the same time became bounded holders of collective wealth. The erotization and stabilization of social practice that were promoted by those de these developments facilitate the use of domesticated plants and animals without determining the extent and character of that use. I think that uh, this view of uh, Julian Thomas, I will explain later, um, is more related to what happened in Amazonia than um, what's happened in Eurasia, but it's, it's a theme of discussion. But also, I, I, I believe in the evolutionary view about the Neolithic, that uh, farming originated because broadening their diet bread led people to increase sedentaries through growth, dependence on plant resources that were dense and sustainable. Farming spread because it enabled people to be reproductively successful by colonizing new territories that had low density foragers. 
in about the mon monumentality. Well, uh, in Amazonia, you have a few rocks. Also, you have megaliths, but most of the monuments are made of earth. But also, uh, monuments can be also artifacts. So I like very much this uh, definition of Bradley that make in 93, that monuments are about memory. They join the past to the present. So monuments can be like uh, megalith circles, like this one in Amazonia. Or also monuments can be this kind of pottery that um, display human figurines or like that in caves. Uh, before I start to talk about the, um, the monuments that happen in lowland South America and more specifically in Guyana, I must say that something different happens about the neolithization process in lowland South, South America. First, the domestication of plants occurs very early, 10,000 before present, but the evolving of the features of uh, neolithization, neolithization occurs only around 2000 BP. So you have 8,000 years of difference between the domestication of plants and the full features, what we consider neolithic, uh, a typical Neolithic way of life. Um, something like um, also that's different is that uh, the explanation of uh, why the the Neolithic uh, occurs uh, later is that um, some groups in Amazonia uh, tend to do hierarchical social formations involving changing ideology and social relationships rather than means of productions. So they are not focused so much in the production systems, but more in the ideology and social relationships. It's not Flannery, it's an American archaeologist, a North American archaeologist from the USA, called Rank Revolution. It's the control of labor and accumulation of symbolic resources, not material surplus. He call it theocratic formative. Formative normally in America is the uh, relative to the Neolithic. Here you have a uh, SPD of um, the region. So we can see in the first arrow, arrow, red arrow, around 10,000 years ago, the, the beginning of um, plant domestication. And you see that uh, the, there is no increase in, in the demography at all. Only around 2000, there is an increase in demography. There is a slowdown. And there is then again, uh, in, huge increase in demography when they start the monument building as megaliths. Well, before monumentality, around 2000 years ago, you have this kind of ceramics. Uh, it's, around, uh, it's already uh, show some features uh, that uh, that um, you later be present in later ceramics. 
also it is, uh, in talking about 2000 before present also we can have lidar uh, i can see we can see here a lidar image of um, a hinge uh, there's hinges building like this like this another one this is a double hinge that occurs in french guiana this is the the the, the bottom of, of the the of the of the hinge we can see a lot of pottery deposited under it also we could detect it, uh, the the traces of the the material used to dig uh, the the force the in this time 2000 years ago uh, these um, kind of uh, sites, uh, those ranges, in fact, they were uh, villages. We can see here in black uh, post holes. In green, uh, we can see um, normally garbage holes. This is a uh, whole area excavation of this village surrounded by a, um, a hinge. So we can see a lot of uh, uh, po uh, post holes and uh, also uh, some pits not used for uh, funerary, but it's not funerary pits. Normally it's garbage, uh, it's dump pits. But also some areas we have uh, inside the, the, the villages surrounded by the, those uh, hangers. We have this kind of features that are fault because of the, 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 the characteristics of the soil. There is no, um, there is no way to preserve bones. But we believe that uh, they are pits for burials. Very simple pits. Also, we can see secondary uh, burials inside funerary urns. We could see, you can see here um, a secondary urn. At the same time that's happening, there is an increase in food production. Uh, you must say that um, in this area of um, Guyanas, we have, uh, it's, it's a very low uh, area. There's flooded in the, during the rainy season. So the Amerindians used to make raised fields. So they make mounds for plantations and the plantations don't be uh, destroyed by, by flooding. So you can see here in red, how these areas are modified by the Amerindians to do plant um, raised fields for planting. You can see here an aerial view of all some of these um, raised fields. So it's the start um, of all that um, from 10,000 years ago, the, uh, the Amerindians in South, uh, lowland South America start to, to, to domesticate plants. It's only around 2000 years ago that they start to uh, increase the production. 
So this is the sign of the increase of the production. So this raised fuel. 1,000 years after the production of raised fields, uh, the area of uh, Guyanas are completely um, modified to the increase of food production. So 1,000 years be, uh, before present, apparently they stopped because they, they modify uh, the, the landscape to food production and they start to, to modify the, the production, uh, not the production, but the uh, landscape modification um, much more for um, symbolic and funeral use. So you have a diversity of monumental landscape at the mouth of the Amazon in Guyana, in speaking specifically. And you have a long-term use, sometimes 1,000 years of megalithic enclosures with pit complex, digit ring enclosures with pits complex, wooden enclosures like uh, wood ranges with pit complex and also the use of uh, natural rock shelters or caves and also what we call forest island well the emergence of monumentality we can talk firstly about um, the megalith enclosures and pit complexes Here you can see some um, pictures of uh, one of the, those megaliths that we have in Amazonia. There are around those megaliths deposits of ceramics. And normally they are grouped. You can see here larger uh, always you have a larger one a larger uh, megalith enclosure associated to uh, minor megalith enclosures so you can see here the difference between size this is a huge megalith enclosures this is a smaller one, even smaller, and sometimes you have just some rocks that um, is the cap of pits containing uh, funeral urns. So you can see here a very small one. Under the caps, we can see this small worms the median ones we can see the presence of um, uh, what we call um, pit with um, with a cave by the side where they put the the, the funerary uh, ornaments You can see caps, uh, granite caps, like uh, lids for the funeral tombs. And over it, a massive quantity of ceramic crushed. And by what we analyze about the ceramics, are ceramics by consumption, probably by local beer and some kind of food. This is the typical shape of this funerary pits. So you have here the entrance and here the part 
where the, they, they deposit the funerary remains. So you can see here another um, view of another pit. This is a little bit more rounded. This is the excavation. Uh, well, um, you are dealing, dealing in the forest and we we take advantage of preventive archaeology to know more about those sites. Here, the start of uh, preventive archaeology, you see the machine start to deforestation and you see here already the 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 fossé the 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 pit here's the DTM of one of those and the the profile of those uh, enclosures and it's very interesting those enclosures different from the early part that were villages now they turn itself into um, funerary areas so you have all this area surrounded by uh, enclosure but just in the center this all this ex excavation area just in the center we can see here in blue funerary pits and in black uh, post holes so we can see that in the center of these uh, enclosures you have also uh, some kind of um, wooden enclosure some kind of wood range around uh, funerary pits And on those pits, you find the same as we find in the megalith enclosures. So pits uh, with um, entrance, like uh, like caves on the side, and this kind of uh, anthropomorphic um, ceramics. can see another view, another pottery. It was intentionally broken by the Amerindians before we excavated. We can see it uh, already um, reconstructed. Also, we have at the same time wooden enclosures uh, or wood ranges associated to pit complex. We can see here a huge future, future that in the center we have uh, an arrange, um, a funerary arrangement and a lot of pits around. And pits have on the bottom uh, um, Post holes, huge post holes. You can see after excavation the size of the post holes that surround this uh, megalith, this uh, funerary pit. This is the funerary pit. Uh, you have an anthropomorphic uh, figure here and some uh, bones, uh, some um, some individuals outside the urns. Here you have an uh, individual of three years old around, and this is a uh, woman of 20, 23 years old. And here there is a man of uh, around 25 years old. And here is the arrangement of this. Uh, 
uh, we can call a wood range. We have the funerary urns in gray. In red, you have the bones uh, outside uh, uh, urns. And in black, you have post holes. So you can see that the pit, the funerary pit, is surrounded by post holes. And this how we imagine it can be, uh, it could be the, the configuration of this structure. You can see here the pit and surrounded by uh, wood, um, by a kind of wood range. Also, People in this time use caves and rock shelters in the same way as they use um, uh, megaliths and um, those wood ranges and the range. So normally, it's um, it's not normal, in fact, in Amazonia to have those kinds of features, these geological features, and this is used normally for Amerindians to put inside um, uh, funerary urns. And associated sometimes you can see large um, megaliths. Here you can see on uh, the uh, you can see the, the configuration of the urns. They are anthropomorphic urns. You can see here uh, some heads outside uh, the, the the normal area that's supposed to be open uh, uh, in the the bottom of the the, the urn. But you can see arms. You can see legs. And you can see the body. And here is the configuration. This is the cave. And this is a circular arrangement open to the east of these funerary urns. And now, so in this area, you have. You always imagine Amazonia as a forest, completely uh, covered by forest, but we have a lot of savannas. And sometimes in those savannas, you have forest island, what you call forest island. That's um, some, some places that are modified by humans in the ancient times that uh, grows um, edible um, trees and in these areas sometimes you can find um, funerary urns semi buried in these forest islands here you can see one of those forest island so this huge um, cave formed by the roots of this huge tree we can see here a lot of funerary urns around this tree well you have further developments it's project amapa uh, the further developments is to contribute to new archaeological Technology on monumentality, niche landscape constructions and legacy in partnership with the, the existing indigenous people in the area, the Palikur, who are the heirs and descendants of those archaeological cultural tradition at the mouth of the Amazon. Those people are the descendants of the people that built those monuments. Here, we are developing a community um, 
um, a community project with them. You have funerary urn excavated together with them. Even the kids uh, enjoy the 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 floating of the deceiving of the to try to find the artifact. And here you have in the forest with the Amerindians try to understand their interpretation on megaliths that happens in their area. But at the end, you have Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil. It's a big problem because he's completely against the areas of indigenous lands, so it's a problem for us. He says since the beginning there will be no more a centimeter for indigenous lands. Many want to condemn new indigenous to be isolated as something rare to say in the zoo. It cannot preserve it, he said about indigenous lands, only for the good of no one knows who. He said about uh, specifically about NGOs in Europe that help uh, Amerindians to stay in their own uh, way of life, but he condemns that. And he said that I want to merge in the Ministry of Agriculture and Environment. There can be no shit environmentalism in Brazil. We win the industry of the demarcation of indigenous lands in Brazil. Indio indigenous doesn't want to be landowner. Indians, Indians want to rent the land, want to do business, electric energy, or dentist to tear the teeth out. The Indian is a human being like us. Doesn't want to, doesn't not want to be used for politics. But this is a discourse. This, um, in fact, he wants to destroy completely um, the heritage, uh, not only the uh, archaeological heritage, but also the the social um, the social diversity in Brazil, and this is a danger. In Amazonia, you have this, there's a few deforestation for soybean, for example. You see the huge deforestation. And huge, huge, huge uh, dam projects that are destroying completely the environment in Amazonia. And there's also projects of gold mining in areas that are completely preserved in indigenous lands. So that's a problem also. So at the end, you are back to the future. Until Bolsonaro is still there, you have a problem with indigenous lands. And the, the heritage, the knowledge about the lands, um, their way of life. Bolsonaro wants to finish everything. Well, thanks for um, for the the, the uh, your assistance in my presentation. I hope it uh, could be interesting to you for do connections between Eurasia and lowland South America. And if you want any discussion. I'd be open to. Thank you very much.